good. Oh hey, this is Gamer Actually and welcome to Gaming Memories. Today on Gaming Memories, we're going to tackle a beat up game that was originally supposed to be a sequel to the most popular beat up franchise during the Genesis days, until it got scrapped and was re-changed to Fighting Force 64. So, how did it all start? Well, let me give you a brief backstory to see how it all started. Do you guys remember Streets of Rage? Yeah. People really like that game. It's considered to be one of the best beat up games on the Sega Genesis. But wait a minute, why am I talking about that game while I'm reviewing Fighting Force 64? Well, there's some sort of similar connection to the series. Originally, it was going to be the fourth Streets of Rage game that was only exclusive to the Saturn, but instead of being developed by Sega, who made the first three Streets of Rage games, it was going to be developed by Core Design. You know, the same developers who made the Tomb Raider series. However, Sega did not like this idea. Instead, they want to rechange the name and it was going to be multi platform. And so they did. But, even though they changed the name to Fighting Force, it was still going to be released on the Saturn, but unfortunately, Sega of Europe secured the publishing rights and announced it on European release date of November 1997. But it got cancelled. But someone posted a prototype version of Fighting Force on the Saturn on YouTube. So, the only games that did made on multi-platform is the PlayStation, Nintendo 64, and PC. The PlayStation version was released in 1997, and then both versions of the N64 and PC were released in 1999, two years after the PS1 version. Even though I got both console versions of it, I'm choosing the N64 because it's a much better version of it. So, is this game a BM up hidden gem, or is it a BMM bombed? As in bad. Bad dudes. Well, let's give it a shot, and give it our best shot. Rumble pack. First, the story. You're stopping an formal powered government agent named Dr. Dex Zhang. Zhang was predicting that the world was going to end in the year 2000 because he made a lot of research and people think he was telling the truth. But then when the day hit at 12.01 a.m. January 1st, 2000 came, nothing happened. Due to Zhang's disappointment and the people, though they believed him, he decides that he wants to end the world by himself and his biological warfare devices. Okay, few questions. First, why do you want to end the world? And second, if the world did end, that means everybody dies, including Zhang, by the way. This is kind of a stupid idea if you ask me. Okay, back to the story. 
but when one of the assistants named Snapper decides she can no longer stand Zhang's ultimate plan, she decides to call four fighters from the streets, and once all that happened, they'll be known as the most violent teams that ever created to stop Zhang once and for all. Okay, now the characters and the gameplay. Okay, for the cast of character, we have Hawk, who is a vigilante and a freedom fighter. Elena, who she is a dancer and a high school student. Mace, who she is an investigator and the first contact for Snapper. And finally, Smasher, who escaped from prison and has a short tamper problem. Okay, so for the sake of this review, we're choosing Hawk. The gameplay is tight for the most part. The character has a lot of movement and well balanced. And the design of the characters and level background looks okay since this game was back in 1999. The hit detection could be good or bad when it's only a guy being you up or two or three guys getting up on you and draining your health bar already. But it happens occasionally. But the most positive thing has got to be the weapons. Either just grabbing a bat to hit people or getting a gun to shoot at people with a limited amount of use or just grabbing a box to throw at enemies. Anyways, one last feature, each characters have their own special moves, like for example, Hawk. His special move is called the 360 Spin Kick. To do the Spin Kick, hold down the Z and A button, and then, blam, he does a Spin Kick. But be careful, it's only a limited amount to use, because do you want to know why? Because if you use that special move, it drains half of your life bar, I meant a quarter inch of your life bar. And, oh boy, that kills enjoyment. But, it's not even used that much. Anyways, and after the level ends, you mostly fight a boss. Mainly this boss named Driver. And after that, there's actually multiple paths. But you see, this is when your high score comes into place. You cannot access a path because you need to earn enough points to enter that level. So yeah, they tried to do something different, but I just didn't like the idea. Anyways, enough of the gameplay. Now, let's focus on to the music. The music is not that special. Well, okay, there are some few good songs in it, but however, the N64 soundtrack is short compared to the PS1 soundtrack being much more very good music. Like, I do enjoy techno, but I still prefer the PS1 soundtrack because it's actually a much better. And plus, I kind of like the elevator music. Here, take a listen. And that's pretty much of music. Anyways, now, this is the part when I have to spoil something, so click this annotation here. Okay, you've been warned. After you pass through all the levels, you go on to the final level, Zang's Island Base. There are three stages. The first stage is the laboratory, when you beat up regular securities, Securities that got robotic arms, which they could drain quarter of your bar by one simple robotic punch. And new human life form called Cryos. 
which if they could take a hit slowly, the enemy bar would increase back to health, but for a millisecond. So make sure to beat them fast as possible. Okay, I just want to talk about one major flaw about this game. Once you go into the final stages, it turns to good, like, okay at best, to now just straight up boring. Like, this got me bored once I entered to this level. And most of all the backgrounds are generic and not fun to look at. And most importantly, when you destroy one of the machines, nothing comes out. Not even a single health item or a weapon. The second stage is the elevator to the top. And one of the most longest stage I have ever been. Like, it feels like I've been in this area for like 7 to 8 minutes, and I'm just waiting to end this stage. Because fighting these enemies are just now too boring to watch now. Like, I should have been playing something else. I should have been playing Crash Bandicoot. Thank god that area is over. And then the final stage. It's just you and Zang. Face to face. But sadly, it's not a good final boss fight. Like, he's too easy to beat, making it overwhelming. There have could have been ways to make this good, like have him on two forms. First is himself, and almost as he's defeated, he pulls out a mech suit and make the fight more difficult or he gets injected with cryo DNA and turns him immortal, and the only way to beat him is to beat him fast enough. Hey, that could work, but since it couldn't do that due to cartridge limitation, it would not happen. After you defeat Zhang, his island base gets destroyed, and Zhang goes to jail. The end. Even though I want to see the characters you chose at, like an epilogue, like, uh, I don't know, an FMV or just pictures with texts. But that didn't happen because, once again, cartridge limitation. And so, that was Fighting Force 64. So, what do I think about this game? Well, it's good, but it really hasn't aged that well over the years. Like, it was good back in the day, but now it's kind of outdated. Besides, the 3M, the 3D beam up genre was kind of dying, and, it, and a lot of 3D games were actually more focused on platforming games and then later first-person shooter games. Guess the 3D-em-up genre kinda died. There were other 3D beam up games like Gikido, but overall, it wasn't a good year for this genre to die. So, with that said, I give Fighting Force a 3 out of 5. Eventually, Fighting Force did get a sequel, Fighting Force 2, released for the PlayStation and Dreamcast for 1999, but it was panned by critics, and I have no reasons reviewing that game in the near future. So, that's that. Anyways, this is GamerX20, and... Oh. Sorry, I need to use the bathroom again. Damn, those chili dogs never run my stomach that well. <laughs>